But yeah, but it wasn't spicy. I was used, I'm getting used to spicy. No, it's not spicy at all. It you can be depending food, on. Huh? Kind of I didn't, but now I do. It's just flavorful. That's what you know. All these white people are afraid of Mexican spice. If you watch Mexican spice of food, they just put a little bit of salsa, like a little bit of do you. Dumb white people are used to fucking ketchup on their goddamn tacos. They're retarded. I was in Washington, and my fucking buddy goes, let's go to Taco Time. Okay, it's a chain, a shit chain up there. And the fucking lady said, do you want mild salsa or ketchup on your tacos? And I fucking left. I go, bro, if you eat that, I'm going to fucking fire you because I can't stand to look at your face. And we just left it there. We paid for it and left it. Fuck anybody. Taco wants time it. ain't no Taco Cabana in Houston. Fuck shit. no, man. Some potato tacos for breakfast. Ooh, stop. And then Taquitos. you stop at the motherfucking Kalachi fucking factory. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know, man. They don't know. We used to fuck it up. What's been going Good on, times. dog? Talk to me. Man, I uh, the summer was a little crazy for me. You know, my PTSD I thought was being handled with uh, antidepressants, but it's not. It wasn't, and now it is. And now it's antidepressants and mood stabilizers. And man, I feel fucking like I haven't felt in five years, bro. I don't hurt. I fucking I am up at seven throwing sidekicks for Jesus. I'm fucking the wife real good. I'm putting her legs up. I'm hugging my babies. I'm playing with my babies more. I'm more focused on it, and it's like, you know, man, you were absolutely right. I didn't like the fucking truth being told to me, but, man, it was the goddamn truth, Coco. When you broke it down, hey, pal, you've been slipping a little bit. You were fucking right. You were goddamn right, and it's and I didn't know how bad it was until I fucking went to the goddamn doctor and describing all my shit, and he goes, you're under-medicated for your PTSD. You are way the fuck under-medicated. And now, man, I feel like I haven't felt in years, man. Like, the whole world isn't closing in on me. Like, fucking, like, LA's not bothering me as much. Traffic doesn't bother me. Fucking nothing bothers me no more, man. I am fucking great with life. It is fantastic to not be pissed off except for when deadly needed. You know what I mean? It's nice. It's, it's nice. It's, it's you're always one of the worst people to get those truth bombs because we, you like you in the back of your head you know he's right. Oh, and that's it, the fucking worst. And he's not right about it. Like I'm not saying you're right about everything because no, no, no one's right about everything. Nobody is. But when you like when you, you've had a couple, we've had a couple of those talks, and during it you like you hate him. It, 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 and it's, it's just brutal. You hate, and I think it's just anybody who you hate. Like when can like cause it's it's so. I hate the most. Nine out of ten men are mad at their dads. Because they confront us. They're the, our mirror. But they're not doing that you anymore. You hate, you hate That's the true. people. Growing up, I hated my stepdad because he would break my shit. He would break whatever move I made. He was two steps ahead of me. You, you always don't like the people. I grew up around people that in all those years I was fucking up, at the end of the night when I was coming down off the coke, they said, listen, we had a great time and stuff. I got to talk to you. Somebody came and talked to me. They know that this guy, you robbed his house. I don't mean to bring this up, but I didn't want to ruin your night last night. Sleep on the couch, get up in the morning, and we got to handle this. And they're not telling me what to do. They're not asking me what to do. They're kind of hinting to me what the right thing to do. And I get pissed. One of the worst conversations I ever had was with Matt Wood and when he came up to me at the comedy works and he goes why do you come here Ralphie 95 yeah I'm ready to kill my ex-wife I'm living in a basement I have no food in the refrigerator I'm sustaining just to do blow pay my rent and pay child support I'm lifting weights I'm doing the right thing but I'm on a fucking roll every night and I would cancel all the time the open mic and this guy came up to me and he goes can I talk to you for a second He's like, hey, man, why do you come down here? Why do you waste your time and their time? He goes, let me be as honest as I can with you. He goes, just being you, you're the funniest out of all these open micers. God forbid you wrote a joke, and God forbid you showed up. Look at your T-shirt. You got a white T-shirt on. You got a white T-shirt on. Dog, my hands were fucking clenching to punch this guy in the mouth. And he goes, I'm not saying nothing bad about you. You're funnier than these guys just being you. And you're throwing it away. I know you're doing blow. I know you don't do it here, but I know you're doing... And this guy just read me the rider. I walked to the bus in Denver, Ralphie, and walked back to beat him up. And when I went back, God let him know to get the fuck out of there. He got out of there. You know where I seen the guy again? Bumped into the guy again in 98 at the Brave Bull. 
in, wow. in Alhambra. And I yeah. followed the guy that used to come out with the hat and go, hi, my, I like my wife how I like my tits with brown coffee. The guy that was like a detective. Yeah. Dwight something in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, Dwight Slade. No, no, no. no, no Dwight, Dwight Slade, Slade, the guy's from Portland. That yeah. was friends with Hicks. This is a different guy. Dwight something. And I followed him and ripped the room apart. And he was back there with Brian Dunkelman. Oh. They had, they had just moved to L.A. together. Man. And he came Too up to me. Those basos de la muerte. And I pulled mm-hmm. him aside. I go, Matt Wood. And he hugged me and he goes, that was, he goes, I'm really proud of you. I go, you know why? Because of that talk you had with me. Yeah. And he took me outside. He goes, I was never more scared in my life, but you had to hear it. He goes, me, Todd, and a bunch of comics talked about it, and Todd didn't have the balls to say something to yeah. you. He goes, I thought you were going to punch me in the face. I go, it changed my life. It changed who I am today. I'm in L.A. because of the fucking words you said to yeah. me. As much as I hated them that night, you know, you are... In my eyes, when I talk about headliners of this decade, you're the top guys I learned from. You have no time to slip. And the Godfather, there's a line that every time I hear it, I want to punch myself in the face. And it's the fucking worst line you could ever say. But where I come from, it's true. Women and children can slip. Men don't slip. That's it. Yeah. Women and children can make a mistake. Men can't make mistakes. We, we don't have... I'm fi- I don't have time to make a mistake anymore. I do not have time to, to, to do anything. We've got handed the keys to the castle, Ralphie, man. Yeah. You yeah. and I have been handed the keys to the castle. Without a doubt. I haven't had a job in 20 fucking years. That's Neither the I. Of, I've never had an answer to somebody. After I went to prison, mm-hmm. I didn't like a man kicking my bed and telling me to wake up. Right. I haven't had an answer to somebody. Well, I haven't had an answer to somebody since I was 15. But for a job, to make a living. And somehow it came together. Even when you were in your fucking apartment yeah. over there, it always came together. As long as you were out every night, right. you were writing every night. You fucking hustle, right? Every day, every work night. every night. Is it scary when you see like how close it is? Like, So I just did that, that seminar, and now I'm trying to start doing more, more of them. And I wasn't even really scared before the first, but now that I'm like, oh, I could, I could see my... I really enjoy doing it. And now that I could see... Not that it's going to be easy, but I, like, I, I can see that I'm not, but it's possible. Like, after you guys see, do shows and you see that it's possible, and you know that there's a ton of work to put in, like, for, at least for me, it got scarier. I'll tell you what game. your market needs right now. And this guy's a genius of getting the business for you. But I think right now what you're doing, fuck these little comedians. I think if they're going to start a podcast, they're going to start a podcast. They know how to do it. Okay. I think your people is like computer people. Yeah, Tech man. people. People who really are uncomfortable, they don't know this world, and they want to learn it from A to Z. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.